Hello there everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Josepha and welcome to another Should You Pull video for Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. Now we're finally moving away from the month of February where we've had all sorts of surprises and crazy things that have happened and some very, very strong support characters in characters like Hope and Kryle and Balthea, etc, etc. There's been lots that we've had to go through so our resources are left a little bit wanting but we're not going to let up easy when we enter the month of March as we're going to be getting a brand new banner that's going to be featuring Onion Knight and the return of Gao. So if you guys would like to find out more about Onion Knight, what his new kit, including his LD, his burst, and like the rest of his kit, comes along and brings to the game, as well as the event itself, and it's a doozy this time, I'll tell you that for free, then of course stay tuned and keep on watching. Of course, as always, don't forget to check out all of my social media links in the description box below. So that's Twitter, Twitch, Discord, and Patreon. On Twitch this week, I will not be streaming Final Fantasy 3 today as I would have done normally, but that's because tomorrow, and it's the last time you're going to hear me talking about this, at least until things have all been said and done, but tomorrow is going to be my 19 hours versus COVID-19 stream featuring Chrono Trigger over on my Twitch channel, so I would love it if you guys would come along, come and join in, or share out that po the post that I'll be making for that so that everyone can come along and seek as we support the British Red Cross in helping people who have suffered due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And then with Patreon, I always shout out one of my patrons every time I release a new video, and this time that person is going to be Chesh is Boss, who is A, an Alice in Wonderland fan, good judging by that name, and B, is also a fan of Kimari. So if you would like features such as a title card made for yourself, and other features such as being a part of the Would You Pull videos, being part of voice chats with myself on certain tiers, then perhaps consider becoming a patron like Chesh's Boss yourself, so thank you very much for your support. Don't forget to check out all the other resources that are out there for Dissidia and Final Fantasy Opera Omnia, and of course, don't forget to check out all the other wonderful content creators there are for the game outside of myself. So now let's take a look at the banners themselves, what they contain, and the featured characters and what they bring along. So the first of these banners is going to contain Onion Knight's Burst only, then it's going to have Gao's entire kit, so his LD, his EX, and the rest of his kit, as well as having Alize and Saz come along with their EXs and their level 80s, which means they can bring call abilities and have call abilities used themselves. Now Alize, as a quick note, is a bit of a weird one here, because instead of using one of her skills, she actually has Enchanted Redoublement as her call ability, which actually is an extension of her HP plus attack. So it's actually just a, a quick note, nothing major to worry about or anything. I just thought it was very interesting that that was what they chose to do with Alize. And then the second banner will contain Onion Knight's Burst, his LD, and the rest of his kit, and will also contain Snow and Kata, along with their level 80s and their EXs. So first things first, let's have a quick look at what Gao has. Now if you don't know much about Gao, I already have covered Gao in great detail in my Should You Pull for Gao, so if you want to have a look at his cat kit all over and say, see what, exactly what it is that he does, then do be sure to have a quick look at that video as well, which I'll leave a link down below in the description box for you. But he does actually get his LD boards here, which increase his capabilities quite, quite a lot. And his LD is actually kind of strange in that Gao is probably the only character I can think of where their LD actively wants you not to use their other skills, which is very odd. But the Earthen Resonance Extend, as you can see here, increases the hit count on Landslide. It also gives him his Beast Teachings buff, which he gets from his other skills. So, which is an amazing thing, because it increases his attack and his max bravery quite a lot. So it means that you don't now have to use his other skills before you decide to use Landslide again to refresh everything on it, because you would have needed to have done so in order to get that buff beforehand. The Awaken Instinct buff, which is the encha Earth Enchant part of the uh, of the effect of the LD, now has a party-wide attack up effect, and it also does boost these counter attacks from his other attacks as well. So. The counter life shaver and counter cat scratch, like it increases their hit count, it increases the amount of damage that they do, all, all said and done. But realistically, you're still just going to want to use landslide and the counter attack that comes with landslide at pretty much every chance you get. So to change it back to like life shaver or cat scratch is a bit odd, but the fact that you get beast teachings and an attack up effect out of his LD does make him significantly better. If you already have Guy, then you really don't really need Gao. If you already have Gal, then this is great, and this will actually be a, a trend going forward. If you already happen to have the characters that have these LD boards going in, then fantastic. But if you don't, I don't think that you need to pull for Gal all that much. Like, he's a great character, but with characters like Cecil on the horizon, I think that if you're going to save, then you want to kind of stick to that and not necessarily dive too heavily into Gal. 
So now let's take a look at Onion Knight and exactly what it is that Onion Knight does as well as all of the new stuff that he's going to be getting. Because we have no rework or anything here as far as I can tell. But he didn't really need one as of, like, apart from the fact that his HP plus after his EX is a little bit lackluster at this point, but it's circumventable. If you haven't used him before, then basically what Onion Knight does is he uses either Blizzard combo or multi-hit to give himself either Sage or Ninja as a job respectively, and one of them boosts his magical attack and it'll like makes him so that he hits sort of AoE damage with his Blizzard combos and his variants that he gets from his EX etc through Sage abilities, or his physical attack and his speed by using his ninja abilities like multi-hit and what he gets out of his EX in like blade torrent and things like that. He is also very focused on ice damage, so he has a C65 that enchants the party for ice, and he also just does lots of damage very quickly. He changes switches between the AoE and the single target depending on which job you want to give him. He does also have some fairly nice sort of attack and max bravery buffs that you can give to the party. Uh, when he's at max level of his jobs he gives 40% attack to the party. He gives like a little bit of max brave overflow. He gives a little bit of max bravery. Nothing too crazy but in actuality, he looks more complicated than he is. He is literally kind of like multi here, very much focused on single target attacks because he gets his turn back quicker. And then ice damage wise, he does splash damage to targets and he becomes much more focused on AoE damage. Now with his EX, he kind of has two of everything, which is a little bit strange except for his LD. So when you're using Blade Torrent as a ninja, it's just a, it's a multi-hitting HP dump that can hit really hard and can hit one attack, one unit like consecutively. Or if you have Meteorite, you get a brave HP attack that hits 100% of its damage across all, all of the enemies. And it's, it's pretty strong, and you get some really good stuff out of it. It also has Ice uh, ice Imperil on it, so that's where your Ice Imperil is going to come from. He also makes it so uh, with the Forbidden Lands power buff that he gets, he enchants himself for Ice to so be still dealing Ice damage even with his ninja skills. He also gets uh, a first turn, very similarly to Lightning, a first turn, free turn, no turn delay, anything like that. And his EX gauge fills instantly after you've used one of his skills. So the idea is that you choose either Sage or Ninja to swap into so that you start your EX off with whichever job you wanted to have. And then his HP plus comes from his EX, so as a ninja, it's a three hit brave HP that's pretty quick. And with Sage, it's a AoE uh, brave single target HP that deals splash damage. So it's all nice like, but the problem that he always had is that because he relied so heavily on his skills because his HP plus wasn't so fantastic, he burned through his skills really quite quickly because his skills were realistically where the majority of your damage was coming from. His EX having a fast recast rate, however, makes a huge difference. Now he leans into a very unique kind of thing with his LD. Now his LD is a six hit brave HP attack to a single target followed by a three hit AOE brave HP attack with split damage after it. So it does both the Sage and the Ninja attacks all at once. It also has the Ice Imperil on it, but it gives him a very odd um, sort of ability that is that looks really strong and actually can be in the right situation because it moves all allies to in skill or like in turn order, so you choose which character wants to go first. If you've ever used Ignis's EX attack, it's very similar to that. But it also gives a free skill use to everyone in the party on the next turn. It also gives him another max bravery buff to the party, and also increases brave and HP damage that he deals as well as his attack stats, so he's kind of got a little bit of what Lightning has in terms of like his damage capabilities. Sadly, he's not quite as damaging as Lightning because he doesn't have the rebreak, the instant turn, all of that stuff. But the increase in bravery and HP damage is really good for him. But realistically, the reason that you'd want to take him is for the skill level 99 buff, the turn manipulation, and obviously those free skills. Now this sounds way better than it actually is, in my opinion. Some people will praise the sun when it comes to this, with this skill because they want to abuse it with certain characters. But the thing you have to realistically ask yourself is when you've gone through various Lufinia missions, when was the last time you actually ran out of skills to use with characters like that weren't LD uses? Because you can't make LD, if, if you could make LD uses free with this attack, I'd be, I'd be telling a very, very different story, but you can't. So I think that the best use for this is with characters that have either a C65 that regenerates multiple skills at once, so characters like uh, Squall can do it, and when he gets his rework at the end of this month, 
presumably. That'll help him a lot. A mid Italian, Kuja, Pinello. Carrots that have a C65 that you can just go, oh, I've got one of each of my skills, it means you're kind of getting two for one on the deal by getting a free skill use, so that's gonna help a great deal. There are also characters that have low skill uses on a skill they wanna be using a lot and don't have a way to regenerate it necessarily, so Ultimecia wants to be using Hell's Judgment as frequently as physically possible, and while she has the ability to regenerate the skill uh, through her LD or get free skill uses from her EX, etc., you can never have enough Hell's Judgments. Theodore is going to have a similar kind of thing with his awakening ability that he's obviously not going to come out for a couple of weeks. But like I said, this ability it is really good, but it's not like as ridiculous as it sounds because it's kind of superfluous. Like with characters like Gladio, um, characters like like really hard hitting characters that everyone uses, so lightning, etc. Getting a free skill use on their regular skills probably doesn't augment them nearly as much as you think. The turn manipulation, however is really good. So the combination of having everything all together is very powerful. Not only that, but obviously Onion Knight is going to get a burst as well. And Onion Knight's burst, much like the rest of his kit, changes depending on which mode he's in when he actually does the burst attack. Now, freak, like, like fortunately, because you have a burst attack and a burst phase, you can kind of pick and choose which mode you want to go on. If you're in uh, ninja mode, then it's a double brave dump, HP, brave HP to a single target. If you're in sage mode, it's an AOE brave HP that does 100% brave HP, to, uh, HP damage to all targets. And then the burst effect, Again, it's very similar to Lightning's, but it's like, if if he had kind of the kind of the turn shenanigans that Lightning had, again, I'd be telling a different story. But he does increase Brave HP, dam Bravery Damage Overflow, Bravery Damage Limit, and then HP damage by 20% again on top of his LD for himself, so he's getting a pretty big buff to that. And then, depending on which mode you used, you either get Physical Attack or Magical Attack to the party, so like corresponding to which job you were in when you used the attack. And this is nice, like, I think the thing with Onion Knight in general is that everything about him is really nice. He's very much a jack of all trades, he's got the support capabilities, he's got funky things that he can do with his LD, he's got, like, a burst attack at all, which is great, that increases HP damage, he's got, like, hard-hitting moves, he's got AoE or single target, depending on which one you want to be going for, but realistically, you can't focus on one half of Onion Knight's kit. And that's kind of where his issues lie. So like, if you're against a single target and you're constantly using all of your ninja skills, you're gonna run out of them pretty quickly. So there are gonna be off times where you're in sage mode and he's not gonna be doing as much damage as he would have been if we were fighting an AOE fight. And the same applies both ways. He's still really good. Like I certainly wouldn't poo poo him, but I think that like because we're getting, we've had such strong support characters and we're getting much stronger support characters in the near future, Onion Knight, while really good, isn't somebody that I would necessarily go pitying. Onion Knight's LD boards literally just make the attack stronger, like instead of having six hits, it's eight hits, followed by a three hit brave HP attack AOE, and you get a bit, it's a bit stronger, so everything like is kind of self-contained within the LD itself rather than the LD board being anything major. However, one thing I do really like about Onion Knight is actually the cool version of his LD, because you still get the turn manipulation, you still get the free skills, you still get the ice in peril on stuff. It's like, you don't get the ice enchant, sadly, which is unfortunate, but you get the free skills and the like turn manipulation in a cool ability, which I do think is really strong. Like, having the ability to take all those characters that I said, oh, you know, they'd really benefit from Onion Knight, and being able to take that and still get that without actually having Onion Knight in your party, I think is really good. His regular call is kind of meh, like it's a, a brave HP attack that has ice damage in it and ha can do splash damage and gives a bit of attack to the party, but again, it's not anything huge, it's just kind of nice to have. When it comes to his armor, he's got the attack keystone, so bravery damage going up by 15%, etc. If you're hitting weakness damage, etc., then it is nice to have this. Like if you, But just like any character, certainly with an attack keystone, you would purchase this if you were going to use Onion Knight a lot. And then lastly, with his artifacts, attack 108, brave, uh, max brave 330. He's not got any like weird stuff within his artifacts, nothing crazy, but he's got, like, he's an early game character. I mean, you don't really expect much from those guys. 
So now let's take a look at the story chapter that's going to come along with Onion Knight, his LD, his burst, etc. And the Lufenia mission for this is one of the hardest there is, at least as far as JP is concerned. If they edit it, because they have done it before to make it easier, then so be it. But I'm going off of what JP has had, and the Medusa heads that feature within this particular story chapter are the bane of a lot of players' existence, because there's a lot of people who think this is as hard, if not harder, than the last batch of really difficult ones we had when it came to Lufenia missions, so like Reno, Kieran, and Sephiroth, etc. Now, from this point onwards, all Lufenia missions will have a aura, or all Lufenia bosses will have an aura that reduces the amount of bravery that you gain from batteries. So characters that battery won't be quite as efficient. Some of them start at like as low as 30%, which you can counteract with certain passes. If you have a look at Tombury Troops website, they actually give a really good sort of rundown on this. So I'll pop that on here for you as well. But then you've got other ways of getting around it, but just be prepared that from now on, Having a lot of battery isn't necessarily going to save you in quite the way that it used to. Now, the Medusa heads themselves are, they have a, the first thing is that they're immune to all elemental imperils, which includes ice. So characters like Onion Knight are like, they're fine because they still are weak to earth and ice. However, any framed debuffs that include an, like, an imperil are also like nullified here as well. So if you're planning to bring Kurosame to this, He's not actually very good for this at all, because he's, without his Hioro debuff, Kurosame is just kind of a bad damage dealer. He doesn't really do an awful lot if he doesn't have the Hioro debuff. They're also immune to defense down, and you can expect that these guys are going to get tanky very quickly. And they have a Lufenia orb, obviously, with any Lufenia orb that appears not until halfway through the fight, so after you take them under half health, they get a Lufenia orb for 15 turns that can be pushed back by plus 5 once they take ice damage. Now, the Lufenia orb itself is actually just the kind of the tip of the iceberg, if you'll forgive the pun, because you can actually get around this by way of things like taking an Onion Knight friend unit. So if you do pull for Onion Knight and get him, I would very highly recommend you set him as a friend unit, because not only is he actually a very good friend unit anyway, because his LD gives free light skills all around, but in this particular fight, it's going to help an awful lot. Shiva, for the same reason, going to help an awful lot. Bringing a call ability like Onion Knight, going to help an awful lot. But you're gonna you're gonna want to bring your strongest guys here. Like it, it, basically, they have an aura after they have their recast. Um, when they put their recast up, their eyes glow, and that makes the bravery reduction aura way way stronger. And therefore, you have to kind of worry about that. And but when their recast attack goes off, if they break anybody, they instantly petrify them. So you need to save up your bravery in order to not get broken while your bravery aura, it, like, while this aura is reducing the amount of bravery you're gaining, so it can be really difficult. They also, at, periodically throughout the fight, apply massive shields as well, that are up to 150,000 damage, I believe, as well, which makes them immune to delay and delete and all debuffs. This is the first time you'll actually see turns get frames on them, so if you look out for that, that means that that turn cannot be moved in any way. Like, that turn is happening whether you like it or not. So just be prepared for things like that. So basically, you're going to want to bring an ice damage dealer. I'm not going to lie to you, without Onion Knight, this mission is very difficult. But if you it, bear in mind that it is permanent content. It's a story chapter. So you can come back to this later if, like, when you've been power creeped a little bit, if you're struggling. Don't panic if you can't clear it day one. But without Onion Knight, it's definitely a struggle. They are weak to Earth, obviously having Gao uh, like featured in it. So if you've got Gao, then you can easily get past this with like using an Onion Knight friend unit, an Onion Knight call, um, Shiva, etc. Because you're still hitting weakness damage regardless. And then you can't, and then you're gonna want to bring some form of protection. So hope is gonna be really good here, especially if you could get, like grab Onion Knight stuff like that, because you get the magic in peril on top of everything else as well, and the bravery damage reduction from himself. Uh, you could also bring along Kefka or Arciella if you're wait willing to wait for her lost chapter because they are not immune to HP silence. So if you have, say, Onion Knight and Kefka, you can get around them that way as well. And there's, there's lots of little pieces, bits and pieces that you can do to make this easier, but this is one of the hardest fights that we've had in a long while. So just be warned of that and like maybe look up some clears that you've seen on YouTube. I'll obviously be uploading mine when I do my covered part of the video for that particular mission when it comes out. I'm hoping I'll have Onion Knight, but I may not, because I'm only willing to go tickets on this. I'll spoil that for you now, and then we'll see what happens. But I just want people to be aware that there is a lot of difficulty in this mission, but it's not impossible. 
So now we come to the big question. Should you be pulling for Onion Knight or Gal? Now, February was rough. Like, we had a lot of banners, we had some surprise banners, we had some really powerful support characters like Kryle and Hope and Balthea and Pinello, and then it was a lot to pull for. Like, I've had to skip a couple of characters this time around as well. We've all been there. And now we're getting another character that is really cool. Like, that's the best thing I can, wait, best way I can describe Onion Knight. He's very cool. His unique LD buff with the term manipulation, the free skills, everything like that, on top of the fact that he's an ice enchant in Perilla, which is very rare. Like, he has half decent auras, he's got a pretty good damage output, he has a burst at all, which means that he's gonna have more damage output than a lot of characters do if you happen to get it. He's a great character, there's nothing outwardly wrong with him. And like, you know, synergy characters are a thing. Like, Arciella and Theodora are characters that I imagine a lot of people are gonna skip out on because Cecil is coming like straight after and a lot of people are gonna want him. So therefore, if you want to be able to do like the chaos challenges and stuff like that, then having a character with two weeks of synergy is going to help with that. And then he's actually, like I mentioned it in passing earlier, like for the uses of this particular mission, he's actually a great friend unit in general because it means that people can use the LD in multiple like turns in a row or they can go, like I've seen people within this mission at the very least kind of go Ice Enchant as the first turn, then the BT effect and then LD, LD, LD and you get free skill uses across the board for ages. That works really well. You do get the LD Call ability as well which gives you extra skill uses on command. Um, so having, if, if all of that appeals to you, then yeah, you should go for Onion Knight, he's very good. But like I said, we've, we've just come out of a large batch of banners where we've all wanted to pull for these support characters. So if your resources are hurting, you can live without Onion Knight. He is, he's really good, but he's not the absolute be all and end all. He is for this mission, like he's very, very strong for this mission, but you will find that there are lots of clears that don't use him. You probably will want to bring along somebody with a burst though, just to counteract that. And while that buff is really fun and unique, like I said earlier, you will probably find that a lot of characters that you're thinking of using them on, if you really thought about it, you'd be like, actually, I don't use all of my skills before the end of a mission anyway. But if you do find that, then go ahead and pull for it. If you do find you're using all your skills, then yeah, have Onion Knight. He is gonna help that out a great deal. Gao, I think, if you've lived this long without Gao, while I think his LD buffs are really strong, it do, he, he's in this very strange bubble of characters that just want to use their LD, their EX on occasion when it comes up, and then their HP plus for every other turn because all of the damage is in his counter attacks. If that sounds a bit dull to you, then you're not going to want Gao. You didn't want it before, you're not going to want him now. Earth Imperil and Enchant is very rare, like with only him and Guy having it. So if that appeals to you, then great. But if you're wanting to pull for one or the other, I would suggest Onion Knight first. So now it's time for Would You Pull, the section of the video where you, the viewer, get your chance to have your voice heard and let everyone know whether you would or wouldn't pull on a banner and why. So a big thank you to all of my patrons once again for your votes and your comments. I've actually changed things up a little bit because I wanted to get a slightly more accurate reading on what people's sort of sentiments were between any banners. So I've actually added an option into the polls here where people can spend either 100 tickets or more or 100 tickets or less or gems or not at all. So with the numbers on these particular banners, 13% of people said that they were going to use gems here, 39% of people said that they were happy to use more than 100 tickets, 41% of people said they were going to use less than 100 tickets, and 7% of people said that they were going to skip the banner entirely. So it feels to me that it's quite a split kind of sentiment towards Onion Knight. I think a lot of people really want the enjoyment of using the LD and the, what you get out of it with the free LD use or the free skill uses, the term manipulation, etc. But a lot of people are like, I've spent a lot recently and I don't want to keep spending, spending, spending before some bigger hitters come along. So to go into some of the comments, Grayson Snyder here says, I'll throw a few tickets at Onion Knight's banners just because he'll be synergy across multiple events, but I've never really cared for the character and would like to keep saving resources where possible. From what I've heard, he's good, but he doesn't stick around for very long. I already have Gal built and I really enjoy using him, so I'm very excited for his LD board. 
See, I think a lot of people who already have Gao are actually more inclined to not pull here because they already have something that they're getting out of it. This is the reason that I pulled for Gao the first time he came out is because it meant that when Onion Knight came out, I already had something to look forward to that I didn't have to spend any resources on. And the same is going to apply to Camelot when Cecil comes out. I wouldn't recommend that people pull for Camelot when Cecil comes out because all of your resources should really be going to Cecil. But if you already have him, he actually does get significantly better for it. So going in further, Jeffrey Redcloud says, might throw some tickets at both, less than 100, just need Gal's LD and would be nice to get Onion Knight as well. Kind of one of his, his bursts, but probably won't chase it, need to recover my resources after I went in deep on every one of Ultimecia's banners. All of Ultimecia's banners were really good, they had a lot of really strong characters in there. I actually pulled quite heavily, certainly for Jack's LD, and I still didn't get Ultimecia's burst or her LD, and that's now gone. So I'm kind of like, okay, I need to find a crack somewhere in all of these banners that I come out where I can save, and this period of time is probably the best time to be doing it. That being said, I do still kind of want Onion Knight, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, so Selk here says, going in with less than 100 tickets, after Cryo drained my ticket stash, I'm left without a bunch left. Onion Knight's LD is very interesting, he manipulates turns and a free skill towards party members, however, I don't think it's something mandatory that I must have. If I wanted turn manipulate, I can just delay or delete the enemy's turn using other units. I also seldom ran out of skill uses in most hard content, so that solidifies the thought of not going hard on this banner. Now I agree with this for the most part. But the one thing I do want to mention is I mentioned in this event the framed turns that start to come out. Delay and delete won't work against characters like that. So in that, in that respect, having Onion Knight available is really handy. And it's obviously intentional within this event that you use characters that have turn manipulation across your own party members rather than manipulating the enemy's turns. So that is something in favour for Onion Knight. And certainly with the LD call, etc. Being able to just go, nope, you, you, next. It, it is very helpful, but I think other than that, this is all very accurate stuff. And then finally, Bupal Wiggum says, I'll always throw 50 or 100 tickets at the new burst banner for that character's LD, just in case of a lucky burst pull later in the month, but with Cecil not too far off, Onion Knight is practically a skip for me. So yeah, I think that like, Having any sort of burst character's LD is always going to be useful because if you accumulate loads of burst tokens, like you pull super heavy on Cecil and you get multiple bursts before you get his LD, like or something like that, it's good to have the LD available for a character you're missing the burst for because you can go, oh, I guess I could just pick this up now if I wanted to. So like, I, and the two week synergy is a thing. I always try to throw at least a little bit at a burst character because of those two factors. Other people may disagree with me, but that's kind of how I go about it anyway. So that's going to be it for today's video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below whether you plan on pulling on Onion Knight or Gao. Do you feel that Gao's getting pushed way too far under the rug like, when it comes to the community? Do you think that Onion Knight's a little bit slept on? Do you think that like there's a lot of events that you plan to use him in the future? Let me know which characters that you plan on using that, that ability with because there are characters that I haven't mentioned that benefit quite a lot from that in, with the purpose of giving you guys kind of the ability to go, oh yeah, but you didn't mention this character because I want everyone to kind of talk about who they'd use Onion Knight with. So let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell for notifications of any future videos I might be making. And if you would be ever so kind, definitely click on the link below for my charity drive and come and join me tomorrow on stream where I'll be streaming 19 hours of Chrono Trigger because I'm going to want all the company I can get because it's going to be a long one and I've never played Chrono Trigger before and you are more than welcome to backseat game and tell me exactly what to do. So thank you very much for joining me and I will see you guys soon. Take care everyone. Bye now.